So good morning, everyone. We're gathered today for the Gaur Purnim, the Purnim, the full moon that um, coincides with the um, appearance of Sri Chaitanya, a historical figure and a spiritual figure who uh, is said to have appeared for exoteric and esoteric reasons. And I wanted to speak about that, but I've decided to speak about another sense of the appearance, emergence of Sri Chaitanya in the world, at least at the moment for this morning. And um, in that regard, I want to speak about uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's meeting with his tutelage under his three gurus, Bande Gurun, as we have been hearing as of yesterday from Chaitanya Charitamrita. The book begins with respect being offered by the author to a plurality of gurus, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had at least three gurus. He had an initiating Diksha guru, he had a sannyas guru, and a Ragmar guru. Hmm. And the meeting with them uh, have been recorded in the text like Chaitanya Bhagavat, Chaitanya Charitamrita. And so this is also a kind of appearance or a kind of a birth, if you will, <coughs> a beginning. Initiations and uh, uh, and so forth, to be initiated into the mantra, to be initiated into sannyas, to be initiated in, for all intents and purposes into the ragmarg. These are significant stages in the emergence of the phenomenon of the uh, Sri Chaitanya. Mm. And uh, his uh, dispensation to the world. It may be a little less abstract, and that might be good for, for you. I can get a little abstract, as you know. So, uh, some narrative about Sri Chaitanya, who again, as I say, is a, is a very uh, much, uh, in the real sense of the term, as it's thought today, a historical person. The historicity of Krishna's appearance is difficult to establish. Um, not that we're burdened by that, but, but some people are and would tend to discount his appearance uh, with, um, without that um, history of uh, Jesus' appearance is, a, is thought to be, a, in some sects of Christianity, a very significant, important, uh, um, compelling uh, the, the physical reality of his uh, appearance and so forth. Um, and so they've, you know, sought to document it and, and whatnot. And while we would have difficulty, admittedly, doing the same by historical standards of today to document the appearance of, of Krishna. It's a true event, but but by those standards, we cannot, uh, probably to the satisfaction of everyone. However, we can, of course, document the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, perhaps more so than even the appearance of Jesus, not to make comparison necessarily, but he has been called the Eastern Savior by the great Bhaktivedanta Thakur. And uh, I know at least uh, one instance, and I'm sure there are many, I, I'm, I know there are many, but one that sticks out of a crossover, uh, a religious cultural crossover of, of appreciation of, uh, from, the, from the Christian side of uh, religious and spiritual thought religion and spiritual experience to the East and an appreciation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, I cited it in my book, uh, Rasa, Love, Relationships, and Transcendence. Oh, and forgive me, but I cannot forget his name, but his, it was a Christian theologian who said of all saints, uh, religious figures uh, in the world, both East and West, I can think of no one, I'm paraphrasing here, single, um, 
such person who more uh, exemplified the love of God that uh, Christ spoke about, and uh, that is the person of Sri Chaitanya appearing in West Bengal, who resided for many years on the shores of the ocean in the uh, seaside uh, village of Jagannath Puri, chanting Krishna's name caused him to readily fall into swoons of ecstasy and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, his selflessness as a sannyasi was noted by the scholar and, and so on. It's a nice, nice statement. So the divinity, the, the, the history of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance and the, the, uh, his obvious uh, divinity is uh, very well uh, documented and it is uh, of an extraordinary nature. Uh, some academics uh, in times gone by trying to uh, understand or maybe trying to dismiss on the pretext of understanding the ecstasy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu have attributed to epileptic uh, seizures. Hmm? But of course, epilepsy is not contagious. <laughs> and we, f- we find <laughs> that it's in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, whatever he had was quite contagious and uh, it was passed on to others and we are uh, experiencing it uh, ourselves to one extent or, or another. And the extremity of his experience is, for that matter, largely available to all of us if we will avail ourselves to his uh, teaching. How much ecstasy is there in those two syllables? Krishna, Rupa Goswami, made the statement, when I utter them, I, I wish for thousands of tongues and thousands of ears to be able to take advantage of that. <clears throat> So that is, sometimes people say, I wish, uh, devotees say, I wish I had, if only I had had taken birth during the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching is that that, that Krishna is fully present in his name, so we're not perhaps paying attention to his teaching. Not not a bad sentiment, but (laughs) it's not that we're missing out uh, in something. Indeed, it gets better as it goes on. There's more revealed. So, uh, so a real person, in the, in the ordinary sense of the term. <laughs> Again, I've said before, how real are our persons that are constituted of uh, fleeting desires, that, uh, of, of things that we come into possession of and slip through our hands and so forth. The self that's based on such desires is rather fleeting and unsubs- un- un- insubstantial. Hmm? And uh, when we speak of the personhood of the Godhead, of course, we speak of a theological person, but we also uh, articulate uh, and explain his theology in such a way that we have uh, uh, access to apply ourselves with regard to it and turn the theological person into the most real person you could ever possibly meet. And the result of which will be finding a personality uh, for yourself, so to speak, that uh, will be very substantial as well. And a personality in relation to him, hmm? uh, based on attachment to him being the, the Godhead. So, uh, so then with regard to Krishna, we haven't got to labor to uh, convince anyone of the existence of Krishna uh, in, in a quote-unquote real sense of the term. We simply have to point to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why is that? Because he was fully absorbed in Krishna. And we see that there is a tangible result from that. Hmm. You can't be uh, connected with a figment of your imagination or a myth only and have that type of real uh, and substantial experience. In the in very, uh, um, very least, the very extreme least, that experience was 
very real in the sense that it afforded him complete detachment from material life, from uh, uh, what uh, most people would depend upon for living and think con- life constituted. We'll get to that, of course, when we speak about his meeting with his sannyas guru. The sannyas means the renunciation of the world and the standard of his renunciation was extreme. So that's something very real, very tangible. In other words, he could live without, so to speak. That means he's living within, as we say, go within or go without. That's our idea. And uh, if you don't go within, then you, you, would do, you end up going without, for sure. You end up with an empty, empty bag only. So, um, he was preoccupied with Krishna, he meditated on Krishna, he chanted the names of Krishna, and, and, and he was very much um, preoccupied with Krishna as the lover of, of Radha, himself in the mood of Radha. This is then the erotic, transcendental erotic life of the Godhead. And you cannot be absorbed in the erotic life of someone and to give up all material sense of eroticism. That would be, you know, what's on your mind is what you do. So it serves to illustrate, of course, that the eroticism of, of Radha Krishna that we find um, showcased and, and is the uh, center in many regards of, uh, in many respects, of Gaudiya Vaishnavism is not um, like the... Um, material eroticism. There may be some similarity. I said the other day, someone asked me once, after studying Krishna Leela, is there any real sex life in Krishna Leela? I said to him, no, you don't understand. There's no real sex life in the material world. (laughs) That's only a a perverted (laughs) reflection. Calm is is, uh, only the shadow of, of Prem. Hmm. So, a very uh, important uh, religious figure, a very extraordinary person, which is document, can, we can document historically, and we find that Krishna exists in him. And you cannot um, study Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and not end up studying Krishna. It's absolutely impossible. Hmm. And one of the reasons, of course, is that he's Krishna. That's uh, part of the uh, esoteric uh, and exoteric ideas of his descent, uh, explained very eloquently by, Sh- by Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami. But uh, I'm sure we'll touch, uh, touch on that to some extent, either tonight or today or tonight, this morning or tonight. But let me uh, segue here then into the uh, the narrative that uh, the three narratives that uh, I wanted to uh, relate and uh, reflect upon the three narratives of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's meeting with his gurus. Hmm. He, uh, of course, was a very uh, famous in his hometown of Nadia, Navadweep. Navadweep Dweep means island, and Navo means nine. At that time, the Ganges Delta there, this is the, where the Ganges, from starting high on the Himalaya, uh, comes down and enters into the Bay of Bengal. In the Ganga Delta, there were nine islands that formed, mm-hmm. and um, this then is the... Uh, the uh, the abode the the dham the the uh, location of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance this um, uh, abode of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is said to be non different from Vrindavan where Krishna appears but it's like a reversible jacket something like that hmm. You put it on one way, it, it was one color, you turn it on the other way, it's another color. And they, they, they kind of have similar elements to them. Hmm? 
you can tell that the reverse side is connected to the other side and uh, it's the same jacket. Hmm? It is said that the Vrindavan is compared to a lotus. Hmm? One time I was walking with Srila Prabhupada in Vrindavan and uh, we had been going to the different places of Krishna's Leela to uh, pay homage to the, this Leela and contemplate it, to, said to take place here and another Leela over there. This is a uh, tradition, of course. The immediate uh, associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Shastra Gurus I mentioned yesterday, who had uh, Rup, Sanatana Goswami and so forth, they were commissioned by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to go to Vrindavan and by the strength of their spiritual vision and experience, excavate, if you will, the places of Krishna's pastimes hmm? uh, to uh, point out, that is to say to the public, this happened here, this ha and reveal, if you will, Vrindavan, which as a holy place and a place of Krishna's appearance um, is sometimes more or less visible, sometimes covered and sometimes then uncovered. Hmm? And uh, they did a huge uh, service in uncovering, excavating the places of Krishna Leela. And they were very successful I as renunciates. They were uh, renunciates. They had nothing except the power of their conviction, their faith, their spiritual experience and uh, the uh, order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And on the basis of this, they went to Vrindavan. And the result of their going there was that eventually, in due course, uh, any king and queen of India, which at the time India was various feudal states or kingdoms, hmm, who any king or queen that, that was worth anything, you know, it's not how much money you have at a certain point, but it's how you spend it, what kind of artwork you've got, what kind of furniture you might have, and so forth. So you weren't a king or a queen that was really worth anything if you didn't have a place in Vrindavan, if you hadn't contributed to making a, 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 um, a, a, a memorial to this pastime of Krishna or that pastime of Krishna, to make a bathing ghat, to construct something where you could come down to the, to the Jamuna, there where Krishna had, uh, the Goswami said, here is where he stole the gopi's clothes and, and hid up in the tree and, and uh, the Vastraharana Leela and so forth. So then they had somebody went and built a, a, a ghat there and, or a temple here and there and so forth. So they uh, got the, pa the patronage of the royalty of the whole political, uh, uh, it's, it's like they got Washington, you know, D.C. to come, you know, to Audaria and say, yeah, this is a special place and, uh, <laughs> and build a monument here or something. Mm. They spoke about Chaitanya here and, and so forth. Vote for me. <laughs> 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 something like that. So uh, they were very successful. There was a lot of uh, very much spiritual power. They had nothing material to attract uh, the um, such uh, patronage, but the strength of their faith, their conviction, their their spiritual experience, which was externally, of course, externally manifest in the form of their renunciation. Their inner life was a little harder to see, hmm? and one tends to. To, to reveal that, or to, to conceal that. Hmm? Um, of course, their attachment to Krishna was, was obvious in a general sense, but at any rate, they were spiritually very um, powerful to attract such, um, such patronage. Welcome. And so, we were in Vrindavan, we were going to these, you know, we would go to Radha Kund, uh, and we would go to Govardhan, and you had to take a bus, you know, to go there, and, uh, or, or a, a horse and buggy to go, you know, to another place. And so, one of my associates there, one of my godbrothers said to Prabhupada, 
Prabhupada, you know, we read in the Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam, that Krishna went, you know, to this place at night and this place here and that. And we're taking, you know, these are taking a long time to get there. It's taking like an hour to get there by, by bus and so forth. How could he, you know, go there and come back and not get caught in the night and so forth at such distances? And he was thinking a little too much about it, hmm, if you will. And Prabhupada said, oh, well, Vrindavan is like a lotus. He opened his hand like this to kind of depict the petals of the lotus, he said. And each of these places of lila, lila stales, they are like petals on the lotus. And so when Krishna wants to go from one to the other, then the lotus closes up. Hmm? <laughs> and then it opens again. <laughs> so this is a spiritual answer to a material type of question, if you will, a material analysis of a uh, spirituality, kind of an importing of our intellect, the burden of our intellect, into a land that's meant to free us from such burdens. Hmm? One time, this is another small example in this regard, one fellow had told Prabhupada, I read your book, the Krishna book, which is all about Krishna's Leela. And Prabhupada said, what did you think? He said, I thought it was a bit fantastic. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, I think you are a bit fantastic. That is a bit of a fear that, that, that you think that God can't do so many things and so forth. Another disciple once, uh, upon reading about Vrindavan, it's described it's so many miles this way and so many miles that way in its circumference and so forth, measurement. And uh, he said, you know, according to the book, it's this big, and, and then Nanda Maharaj, Krishna's father, said to have 900,000 cows. Now I calculated this out, and there's not enough room for 900,000 cows there. <laughs> And Prabhupada said, you read too much. <laughs> <laughs> so these are good answers. Hmm? Hmm. At the same time that there is a, a geographical kind of description of the Dhams, of, of Vrindavan and Namadweep, we are also taught that to think of them as a geographical location is, 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 nam, is Dham Aparad, an offense to the Dham. They transcend... You see, it's just like Krishna says in the Gita. He says that my dham, dham means light. Hmm? He says, and it means abode. My, my abode, he says, is self-luminous. Hmm? If the light of the world is consciousness as it is. Without consciousness, we can't. It's all dark. <laughs> There's no seer. Hmm. And there's nothing to be seen. Hmm. If there's no seer, there's nothing to be seen. So consciousness is luminous in this sense. Hmm. And he says, my abode is self-illumined. He says, there's no need for moon there. There's no need for sun there. There's no need for fire. Prabhupada translated fire, electricity. Hmm? The modern rendition. There's no need for any of these artificial, if you will, as you're thinking of it, ways of, 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 of illumining. Hmm? He said, such is my abode, and, and going there, one never comes back. He's saying, it's luminous in, 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 in all respects, not just in the sense of, of light, it's, the lights are on, but it's enlightening, it's enlightened. It is uh, entering into the light in which, from which one will never return to the darkness. Hmm? There's no possibility of that. And so, my point is what? At the same time, that's the philosophy, right? In the context of Leela, which is moving on a canvas of philosophy by the force of ecstasy, bhava, there's a canvas, if you will, that the art of Krishna Leela is drawn on. Hmm? There's a stage on which the drama of Krishna Leela is performed. So the stage is 
a tattva, uh, a philosophical philosophy. We call it achintya beda bed. Hmm? You have to know this. What is abeda beda bed? Then you can talk about Krishna Leela in so many ways. Hmm? But at any rate, on that canvas, this on that stage, the, the art and the drama is be, of Krishna Leela is being performed, and the drama is being fueled by bhava, by ecstasy. Hmm? We say, for example, everything, everyone belongs to Krishna. Krishna is the is the is the uh, uh, cheto chetanas chetananam. He's the one eternal. We are the plural eternal. Eko bahunam vidati kaman. The Shruti says, and the many consciousness units are dependent upon the one. Eko bahunam yo vidati kaman. The one is maintaining the many. Hmm? So there's one sustainer, maintainer, and there are many maintained. Hmm? It's like there's one. Husband and many wives, of course, wives maintain husbands these days, and probably in other days gone by in, in ways that weren't appreciated. But, but, um, but, <laughs> but um, in Leela, in the Leela, we find that uh, the gopis aren't married to Krishna. Hmm? For example, hmm? but then from the point of view of Siddhanta, we say, "Wait a minute. He's the wi- he's the husband of their husbands." Hmm? Uh, this, <laughs> so that's the Siddhanta. Get then on the canvas of that Siddhanta, the art of the bhava is in a, is a spiritual kind of illusion, if you will, that's real, because it gives pleasure to Bhagawan, and that's the standard of real. Re- reality and dharma, sangsidir, haditoshanam. Hmm? It, the measure, the extent to which it pleases Bhagawan is the extent to which something is meaningful. Hmm? So that bhava is very meaningful. So it's so the bhava uh, is 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 um, drawn on this uh, canvas, hmm? and um, so anyway. The dham, it is luminous, effulgent, self-illumined. That's the philosophy. There's no need for sun. There's no need for moon. Hmm? But in Leela, which is performed in the dham, there is a sun. There is a moon. <laughs> that is that, that is a, a bhava moon, a bhava sun. They're devotees. As a sun, that's a devotee. <laughs> a sun, that's a moon. Hmm? So it's a, it's a, uh, uh, so similarly with the geography, it's given it's this many, this far and this wide and so forth and and so on. But it's not at the same time. Hmm? The dham is oh, it is everywhere. In that everything is within it. Hmm? If we go from material life to Brahman, from Brahman it seems big, just infinity, infinity. Hmm? If we go into Vaikuntha, it seems to become smaller again. There are forms and shapes and there's said to be planets and this gives you a sense of size. Brahman has no sense of size. Hmm? Right? Then we go to Vrindavan, it becomes even smaller. But Vrindavan is smaller than Baikal, it's just a village, something like that. But it's actually bigger, <laughs> so we're moving really in the direction of affection. And there's none here, so, or very little here. Hmm? Very little. So it's a very small place. Hmm? In Brahman, there's no exploitation. So that's bigger. Hmm? No, there's no meanness there. Hmm? Some kind of indirect ananda. And if we go to Vaikuntha, then ananda is increasing, manifold. If we go to Vrindavan, then 
What is the measure of ananda? So how big it is. Everything is contained within that. In other words, the full measure of ananda, of love, of possibility of the jiva, who is one part constituted ananda, this is the most important part of itself. Hmm? In connection with this rup shakti of Krishna, this possibility to uh, experience the, the full potential of, of, uh, of being a unit of, of ananda. Uh, comes to the comes to the fore. So anyway, the dham is the full measure of ananda. So every other the implication would be every lesser measure of ananda is contained within there as well. So that's the sense the dham is everywhere. But for the sake of Leela, it's this big, and you have, and once you cross this place, then you've gone to Chandrawali's camp, and once you've gone there, you've gone to Radharani's camp, and and so forth and so on. So. Mm-hmm. So Navadweep, hmm, then this lotus that is Vrindavan, hmm, it is said that inside, if you look, it, if it op- it's opened up and you look at the center, you look in and you keep looking there. What's the center? Radha and Krishna, as I said the other day. If you look at Krishna closely, you say, okay, look at Krishna, what do you see? Hmm? Then someone will describe, yeah, but then someone will describe Krishna and we say, look closer. What do you see? Look closer. And say, what do you see? Oh, I see another. Hmm. Radha Krishna. Uh, now you're getting close to, uh, to seeing Krishna. Now look closer. Hmm. Radha Krishna Pranai. Vikriti Ladini Shakti Rasmat. E Katmano Vapi Bhuvi Purade Ham Vedogato To Chaitanya Kyam Prakatam Adunatadvayam Chaikam Aptam. Radha Bhava Duty Subalitam Naomi Krishna Swarupam. What do you see? The one you look more closely, you saw two. Look closely again, the two have become one as Chaitanya. The, and the lotus, the, another lotus opens. This is the reversible jacket, if you will. Mm-hmm. It's the same jacket, but it's reversed out. The lotus within the lotus. And here you see. Chaitanya Mahabhu must be Krishna. He cannot be an avatar of Krishna. He must be Krishna himself, the avatari. He has to be. Hmm? Why? Because he is Krishna tasting the prema madhurya that is relevant only to Krishna. Hmm? Narayan or any of the avatars of Narayan do not have the quality of prema madhurya. When Rupa Goswami has analyzed the qualities of Krishna, he said that he has, what is it, four qualities that we don't find in Narayan. Hmm? Lila Madhurja, Rupa Madhurja, Venu Madhurja, Lila ma, Prema Madhurja. Madhurja means sweet. Hmm? So he has Leelas that are very sweet and charming, human-like. He has a sweet Venu Madhurja. Narayan isn't carrying that flute. That's very sweet. This is he, what, he plays the flute and charms everyone and so forth. Hmm? And Rupa Madhurja, two-handed form, very, very charming. Arjun wanted to see this form. Hmm? Sweet form. And Prema Madhurja. Prema Madhurja means he's surrounded by a certain type of devotees with, with, with Prema that he corresponds with. Hmm? So, Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, is Krishna. If we say, okay, I accept he's an avatar. We say, wait a minute, you have to go a little further. This is Kraviraj's argument. He's the avatari. He's the same as Krishna. He is Krishna himself. A fine, subtle distinction here. Not an avatar of Krishna. He's the avatari. In an extraordinary, kind of reversed out role, if you will. He is trying to taste Prema Madhurya from the vantage point of the devotee, of Radha. Hmm? That is what Chaitanya is about. He cannot be an avatar. They're not interested in this Prema Madhurya. Krishna is interested in this. This is relative only to Krishna. So so suddenly this lotus, if you will, of Golok, there's another lotus inside of it that is called Navadvip. Navadvip at the Ganga Delta. 
and all the Bay of Bengal and all the Dweepas, all the islands, Nobod Dweepa, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani Vedanam. When Prahlad was asked, what is the best thing you've learned from your teacher? Of course, his father didn't know that his teacher was in secret Narada Muni. He thought he was learning about politics and and diplomacy and uh, how to get ahead in life. And he said, the best thing I learned was hearing and chanting, meditating upon, hmm, and all these things, Nalalakshan Bhakti, nine forms of bhakti. Hmm? The nine principal forms of bhakti, hearing, chanting, offering prayers, doing archa and worship of the deity and so forth. All these things, this is the best thing I've learned. These islands then correspond with these uh, all expressions of bhakti. And in the center of them is this antardvip, antardvip, inner, antar means inner. And this is where Mayapur is. This is where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. Hmm? And there, as I was saying in the narrative, he was very popular. Hmm? He was uh, named, as we heard this morning, in the poetic rendering that we read of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. He was named by Sita. Sita is the name of the wife of Advaita. Advaita is the one who performed the puja hmm, with Ganga Jal, the water of Ganga and the Tulsi, um, the Tulsi, um, how do you say, blossom. Hmm? worshipped Krishna with a view to cause him to descend in the Kali Yuga and so forth. And so his wife, very, very, he, was a, he was very prominent in Chaitanya Rila and his wife as well. And she, we heard, coming to the, name, to, the, to the ceremony of his birth, gave him the nickname Nimai. Nimai after the Neem tree that he was born under. That tree is there, as I said, it's historical <laughs> reality, right? Uh, he uh, was born under the neem tree, and uh, neem is said to be an auspicious tree, and it has antiseptic qualities, and some of you may be familiar with neem and its uh, properties. And um, so, out of a, a sense, a protective sense of the child, she said, let him be called Nimai, was a nickname, hmm? a name after the neem tree, and that will keep any ghosts away or something like that. It was thought that if a child died in those days, uh, childbirth or child death, you know, was more often uh, thought of. And so people would tend to think superstitiously that it was a, a ghost took the child or, or something like that. Hmm? Now, we should know, of course, that, um, I'll give you an example, how to help think about that. Hmm? Because obviously there are superstitious things, and then and then there's Leela. Prabhupada once uh, said that you know if you if you if you clip your fingernails and you let them fall rather than clean up, then thieves will come hmm, at that place or ghosts. I forget what it was. Yeah. So I told the devotee. I was clipping my fingernails. He told me, I said, that's just superstition. No, Prabhupada said that. I said, yeah, it's still, it's still a superstition. <laughs> he said, but how could you say that? Prabhupada just believed in superstition. I said, no, 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 it's a superstition. But it happens in the Leela. Hmm? <laughs> in Leela it happens. Hmm? All those superstitions happen, and there are all kinds of ghosts and all kinds of things in the Leela, from the Leela perspective. But from the, we don't have to worry. But I cleaned up. Then, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so, so she named him um, Nimai, and the name kind of stuck. It was a nickname and kind of a, a blessing hmm, from the motherly uh, Sita. And, uh, and later then, he was called Nimai Pandit. It's the extent to which the nickname, his, his birth name was Vishwambar, Vishwambar Mishra. Vishwambar means the, the maintainer of the, of the world. Hmm? Vishwam Barmisha and a Brahmin family, um, religious family, and um, 
he was, uh, he had an elder brother, there were some daughters that were born and had died, and it was on account of this that Sita thought, I should, you know, we should make sure he doesn't die, I'll have to give some blessing uh, try with all of my power, and in the form of the nickname Nimai and stuck. And later, when his scholarship came to uh, sur the surface, which was extraordinary, he was then titled the Pandit, Nimai Pandit. Hmm? So he's very famous in Nadia for his scholarship and his ability to work with knowledge like it was like clay, you know, you just turn an argument this way and, and turn it another way and, uh, and so forth. He would make arguments that no one could defeat and then he would de defeat them himself. And then he would revert back and reestablish his points and so forth. So we find a measure of uh, knowledge, which is one of the Aishwari, one of the opulences. It is said, uh, uh, knowledge, renunciation, fame, uh, beauty, uh, wealth, and what? Strength or religiousness. This is the real strength, Dharma. These are the six opulences and that Parashara, the great sage, father of Vyas, said that he defined Bhagwan by way of these opulences. He, he said, who has some Aishvarya Sisamagrasa, Birya Sasasriya, or who has all these six opulences in full, Bhagavan, it means possessing all opulence, is God. And, and by implication becomes all attractive because we are attracted to famous people. Uh, and you want to hear about what they said, whether they have anything to say or not. <laughs> they usually don't a lot of time. But still, you know. Uh, so, uh, and, and wealthy, wealth and so on, beauty and, and all. So, um, hmm. uh, we find in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu all these opulences, but we also find a very considerable measure of knowledge and the corresponding bairagya, detachment in his sannyas. We have to get to that, of course, his sannyas. His renunciation was very extreme. Hmm? <coughs> but before all of that, it was his knowledge that was prominent. And um, it was so prominent that Navadweep at the time was a seat of learning. Hmm? It's said that the great Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, who is known as the greatest logician of, 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 of India, I think he's recorded in the encyclopedia, Britannica edition, uh, that he had gone to Matila, which was the place of, the, which had like the crown of, you know, the, the most learned scholars or something like that. And they had a book there that uh, you could go and study, but you couldn't make a copy and go with you. But Sarva, take it with you. Sarvabhama went and memorized the book and took it with him that way to Nadi and began to teach from that. Hmm? His disciple Raghunandana hmm, then uh, became very, very famous, perhaps more famous than or as famous as Sarvabhoma for his uh, logic. It was called a, at the time a Nava Nyaya, a new type of uh, logic. Nyaya was a particular uh, discipline and so forth. So this was very prominent. And of course, the story is also there of Raghunandan, the pundit riding on the boat across the Ganges with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm. And um, he had just written his book, <coughs> which became very famous later on. And he wanted Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to read his book and give his opinion on that. And uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, yes, I'll do that, but first you read mine. I've written one. And he manifested a book. <laughs> And so Raghunanda began to read it and he began to cry. And, uh, and he's, Mahaprabhu said, why are you crying? He said, well, because I might as well throw my book in the Ganges now. Hmm. <laughs> Mahaprabhu said, give me that back. He handed back the book and he threw his, his book in the Ganges. <laughs> so you become the most learned scholar hmm, from your book. This is what I think of knowledge. That is knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, he was very famous, and even uh, the Digvijaya, the, the well, most well-known of the time, Pandit, who they would go and they would have debates and conquer, you know, by and uh, and, and uh, get uh, notoriety in this way. When he came to Navadweep, 
the pundits all left town, the elderly pundits all left town, and they thought that, oh well, oh, we don't want to be around when he was there, that's convenient, but Nimai will be, will be there, the boy, and um, of course, if he defeats a boy, we'll say, well, you came to our town, you defeated a boy, what's that? And then they thought, but kind of quietly, but if, he, if Nimai defeats him, then what would be the glory of Namdu? And they're thinking from a scholastic point of view and so forth. They had some inkling that might be possible. Hmm? They were very enamored by him. They were very attracted to him. Everybody in Namdu was very attracted to him except the Vaishnavas. They liked him, but they didn't like the fact that he was emphasizing knowledge over devotion. Hmm? And they were, of course, preoccupied with the the, uh, the relative value of knowledge and uh, in comparison to bhakti and so forth. And so by this time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not yet exhibited uh, fully his bhakti and who he was hmm? in the full sense of the term. The Leela is slowly unfolding, and this is part of it. He wanted to show how small a thing knowledge was. Hmm? So anyway, that pundit did come hmm, to Navadvip, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked him to please... Uh, we are in your presence, recite some praise of the Ganges. So he, he, in a, he, without thinking, this pundit is said, he spoke 100 verses, Sanskrit verses, full of alliteration and other ornaments, linguistic ornaments and so forth, um, in glorification of the Ganges. That's a, quite a feat. And so Mahaprabhu said, we are very impressed. That is extraordinary. Hmm? And so then um, he said, I have one question though. In the 64th verse, you said this, and I think you might have wanted to say it like that. And, and the pundit was thinking, how could he remember the 64th verse? I mean, I, I recited these things like the blowing of the wind. And then he finding some some fault in it grammatically and he and at the time you see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Nita Nimai Pandit Nimai Pandit was only a student of grammar. And this is only the beginning of language study. Hmm? And the Pandit was far beyond you know the, the, the grammatical studies. Hmm? He was a literateur, hmm? not a student of grammar. And here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is remembering the verse and then pointing out some literary uh, ornament that is actually, was actually a, a fault. So the planet went home and he was bewildered how this could happen, how he could be embarrassed like this in assembly. And of course in the night the goddess Saraswati, the goddess of learning, appeared there and said, don't you know who he is? <laughs> He's my you know, lord and so forth. So. It's a wonderful story. At any rate, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was famous in this way in, in Bengal, but and he had his own students that he was teaching at, at one point. But uh, his father passed away, Jagannath Mishra, and something else was, of course, stirring in him. The time was coming for his was for manifesting the uh, principal reason for his descent or one of them at least, the distribution of, of, of Rag Bhakti. Uh, during that time, before he uh, went to East Bengal to perform the Shraddha ceremony for his deceased father, one sannyasi named Ishwar Puri, who was disciple of uh, Madhavendra Puri, hmm, who was the guru of Advaita, Nityananda and others and so forth, came into Navadvipa. Vrindavan Das Thakur describes him in the Chaitanya Bhagavat as coming in disguise. Hmm. He was a sannyasi and uh, a devotee, but he uh, dressed himself in such a way that people would not uh, identify him as a saintly person hmm, at the time. He wanted to be kind of out of the um, spotlight, the line, not that he, so that he would do something unbecoming, but he, he didn't want any recognition of fame or... Hmm? Incognito. He was, yeah, incognito, right. 
he was incognito, and so people didn't understand him, but he came to the house <laughs> of Advaita, where Sankirtan was always being performed. Hmm? Advaita was uh, a great advocate of the Yuga Dharma of Nam Kirtan and so forth. And there he sat listening to the Kirtan and the Katha, the, 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 the discussions conducted by Advaita. And Advaita looked at him and said, hmm, uh, uh, Bob, he said, hmm, uh, uh, what did he say? Tumi Konjan, hmm, Vaishnav, Sanyasi to me. He said, Who are you? You look like a Vaishnava Sanyasi. <laughs> he said. Hmm? He said, It said by, by Brindamanas, he could see in ways that others could not see. When one real devotee meets another, they see, in, 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 they, uh, they see their, their bhava, their ecstasy, their inner. Reality. He he looked at him and he, he brought so he brought him out as Ishwar Purhan from his humility and so forth. Hmm? And he was Ishwar Puri was a scholar, also, and and uh, one day he was staying for some time in Navadvip. He met on the street Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? And Nimai Pandit. Nimai Pandit paid his respects to Ishwar Puri, hmm? a devotee of Krishna. Now, you know, it was revealed that he was a devotee and a sannyasi. He paid his respects to him. And uh, Ishwar Puri was very attracted to the boy. Hmm? And the boy invited him, you please come to our house for dinner. Hmm? Which is, of course, how the sannyasis maintained them. They were maintained by the household community. Everyone would have competition who could invite the sannyasi to their house for dinner or lunch that day and, and so forth. If you could get him to eat, then you felt like my obligation is fulfilled. I fed him, you know. The obligation is more than that. <laughs> and they, they let you know when they come to your house to eat, you know. They, they so, anyway, he came, he took, uh, took, uh, Prashad offering of Sachi and that uh, she had made and and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was uh, uh, attracted to him and he was attracted to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and at the time he said to him, to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that you're Nimai Pandit, you're well known for your scholarship and so forth. I've written a book, hmm? maybe Krishna Lilamrita hmm? and I thought maybe you could read it over and see, you know, look at it from a literary point of view. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to him, he, he, "See here now, he's with his. This he will. This will become his diksha guru." Hmm? And so, in his presence, already his bhakti is starting to come out. And what does Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say? Oh, I may be a big scholar, but I I cannot criticize a devotee's book, a book of someone who's written a book glorifying Krishna. That has no faults. Hmm? Any book glorifying Krishna is perfect. If there, even if there is a fault from another point of view, hmm, this is the faultless uh, course to take. Glorifying Bhagavan, even he said to him, "It's learned people say, Vishnave, Vishnaya, Vish, Vishnave, Vishnave, and those who are not, not learned, they say Vishnaya." Hmm, he said, "But either one is accepted by Vishnu hmm, when they say it from the heart and so forth." So that cannot, there can be no fault in your book. Mm, you're a devotee. Your book is glorifying Krishna Leela. So later on, then they had spent some time together and, and uh, they were discussing the book. And uh, before Puri was reading and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was appreciating and commenting and so forth. And, uh, and then he said, suddenly he said, I think you should have used this verb uh, tense here. Hmm? And Ishwar Puri said, oh, huh. And then the session ended and Ishwar Puri went back and thought about it and looked at it. And then he said, he analyzed it carefully and he said, actually, it was very, it's a complex grammatical argument. He said, actually, he, he realized I did use the right one. And I see why he said that and why he could have thought that and so forth. So then when the next day he went back and he explained it to him and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, just see, I have been defeated. Hmm. <laughs> it's the only person that defeated Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <laughs> in, in scholarship. Hmm? This is his leela. Hmm. 
Mm. Mm. That he would be defeated by his guru. He took, and he took so much pleasure in it. When others were defeated, of course, they didn't. They felt themselves the losers. Mm. And he was defeated by, by, by a devotee. He took great happiness in that. And then Ishwar Puri went on his way to East Bengal and, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then on the pretext of performing the uh, Shraddha ritual for the, his deceased father went to East Bengal with some students and there he had a transformation at uh, Gaya. He saw the, the famous footprint of Garadhar and he, uh, ecstatic symptoms began to man- manifest him and, and he passed out and so forth. And there again he met Ishwar Puri. Hmm? And uh, uh, he was actually cooking lunch, and Ishvara Puri appeared on the scene, and Mahaprabhu said, oh, you please eat. Ishvara Puri said, no, you've cooked, you have to eat. He said, I'll cook again. That's all right, you eat now. You've come to my house. He, he, he fed him, <laughs> and then it said, the goddess Lakshmi appeared in the kitchen and manifested another lunch for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> well, these are the stories. So. So at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked him for initiation. Hmm? And Ishwar Puri said, you are, I know who you are. Hmm? And so Mahaprabhu revealed himself to him. And he realized, I'm in a leela, hmm? where I'm the guru of Krishna, in a very extraordinary leela, the reverse out of Krishna leela, where Krishna, who's the object of love, becomes the shelter of love in pursuit of experiencing himself like one who is the shelter of love, Radha, in this case, experiences himself. And this is the reverse out. I suppose. So he's, he realized, I'm in such a leela. Hmm? Ishvara Puri, of course, how did this happen to him then? Of course, it's all God's arrangement, but he was a disciple, as I mentioned, of Madhavendra Puri. And in the end, he, he, he took care of Madhavendra Puri when um, he was bedridden and, uh, and he waited on him hand and foot, menial services and so forth. You know, we go to the guru, we want to be entertained and hear some knowledge and, and so on and so forth. But uh, um, Ishwar Puri was staying to the, you know, he was there for love, for affection. So he... He waited on him hand and foot and so forth, and, and he was said to have been blessed at the time by Ishwar Puri. That, that, and this way he became, in Leela, the guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is the first guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Ishwar Puri. And after receiving the mantra from him, the ten-syllable mantra, Krishna mantra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went mad. It is said by Krishna Das Kaviraj that when he came back to his guru and said, what kind of mantra have you given me? He quoted a nice verse from Bhagavatam describing the falling on the ground and uh, rolling in ecstasy and so forth uh, that's possible by, by the power of uh, Krishna Nam. And uh, Ishvara Puri said, it, it's working. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's, that's what's supposed to happen. Hmm? It uh, may look disconcerting, but that is the nature of Prem. Krishna Premer Arbhuta Charit. It has a wonderful characteristic, the Prem. Inside, outside, it looks a little foreboding. These tears and crying, falling on the ground. Again, they thought it was, some people, epileptic fits. Hmm? But inside, it is anandamoy, full of ananda. Hmm? And material life is, of course, just the opposite. It looks like it might be enjoyable on the outside, but if you look at the core, the inside, it's... <coughs> It's hollow, it's empty, it's rotten. Hmm? It's about taking. So. Not giving, it's mean-spirited. We're on the take here. So, Mahabubu took, but he took Diksha. Hmm? Then this is the beginning then of his giving. Then he began to give bhakti everywhere. Hmm? He crossed back into West Bengal, and in his teaching he taught only one thing. Hmm? how every word in the Sanskrit lexicon means Krishna. <laughs> so uh, it was a huge uh, event and a huge transformation in him. And now 
all the Vaishnavas who were performing Sankirtan and amidst opposition in Navadvip, hmm, um, where, as I say, this kind of dry scholarship was and materialism was, uh, was prominent, hmm, they got encouragement that the Nimai Pandit, most learned of Navadvip, has become a Vaishnava. Nimai Pandit has become a Vaishnava. Nimai Pandit has become a Vaishnava. So the word went all over Nadia. Hmm? And they couldn't, and they tried to understand what kind of Vaishnava, what kind, he, when he does something, he does something. When he, whether it's knowledge, <laughs> we can't, can't imagine the depths of his, his knowledge. Now it's bhakti. We've never seen anything like this. What kind of bhakti? And sometimes they thought, his love of Krishna is so extraordinary. He has purchased Krishna so much by his love. He can give Krishna so readily. Maybe he is Krishna. No, that can't be. But may, that thought would come. Maybe he's Krishna. No, that can't be. Hmm? Then it would come. Maybe he is Krishna. And if he is, then, well, then where are his associates? Because Krishna is not alone. Hmm? Dismiss that thought. Then it would come again. <coughs> but then they realized... He sat one day on the altar in the house of Srivas where they would do kirtan at night. Hmm? He sat on the altar and said, see me for who I am. And see who for who you are. He called each one forward and said, in the reverse out Leela, this is who you are. See me, see yourself. They realized, we are the associates of him. This is, a, <laughs> we're in another Leela huh? <laughs> here. This is extraordinary. We're in Vrindavan. We haven't left. But there's another lotus inside. We're in, we're in that one. Hmm? Our roles are reversed out to some extent, but, the, but, but they could trace it out. The parallels are the same. And then some of them wrote about it for our sake. This is an amazing experience they were having. Hmm? And all this started to happen ostensibly as a result of Mahaprabhu is taking initiation. What are the possibilities of change then that come to us? Hmm? Then he did perform Sankirtan in Nabhadweep for some time and all the devotees were encouraged by that. The opposition was completely overcome. They would do Sankirtan and then the Hindus who didn't understand what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was about, some of them complained even. And the government was a Muslim government and so the Chand Kazi, the Kazi, he sent some people to, to break the Murdangas. Stop. They said, there should be no public chanting like this. It's a nuisance. And so the devotees reported to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Chand Kazi has broken the Murdanga. What to do now? And he said, let's go visit the Chand Kazi. And 100,000 <laughs> devotees went with torchlights, kirtan at the house of the Kazi. Hmm? Protests, uh, public protest. This has power in Kali Yuga. Hmm? Right? <laughs> Occupy the Kazi. <laughs> <laughs> it, <was a laughs> it had power. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so they chanted. And the Kazi had to come out, but he was afraid. Hmm? Mahaprabhu said, No, there's no reason to be afraid. We're living in the same village. You're an elder. You're like my uncle. Because hmm? hmm. you're an elder in the community, even though you're a Muslim and I'm a Hindu, ostensibly, my life transcends such uh, sectarian uh, concerns. And uh, we're here on a friendly mission. Don't mind them; <laughs> they're all like that, <laughs> riled up, you know. And uh, he said that he had something that he wanted to confide in in uh, Nimai Pandit and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, yes, please, go ahead. He said, no, in private. In private, I'd like to say. And Mahaprabhu said, this is private. All these people, this is private. Hmm. He says, he's saying, my devotees and I are one. Don't think we're different. My devotees and I are one. 
like when the Kumaras went to Vaikuntha and they said, he said, Mahaprabhu uh, Narayan came to the gate and said, oh, I have offended you. He said, no, the gatekeepers offended you. He said, no, I have offended you. And they were smart, the Kumaras, they got it. Huh, these are Hari's people, these are the Harijan. And they are one with him in a different kind of oneness than what we were interested in. Hmm? They're one and different at the same time. Hmm? Their love is what he corresponds with. It's like if I say, Hari Bhakti and I are one. Nobody thinks Hari Bhakti and I just disappeared and we're just turned into a, uh, a formless <laughs> something. No. Hmm. We are on the same page, in the same paragraph, in the same sentence, inside a parenthesis. <laughs> he said, my devotees and I, this, this is, uh, to the, so you can say anything here. Whatever you say to me, you can say it here. So he told, last night I had a vision in a dream. Hmm? And a, a figure with a lion's head and a man's body came. Or, what is, yeah. And, 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 and he jumped on my chest. And he had long nails like a lion, and he scratched the chest like this, and he said, that murdunga is my favorite instrument. <laughs> Don't ever break it. And then he opened his, his quirts, and he said, just see, and there were the scratch marks, and all the devotees were, ah. Bhagavan Narasimha, one of the avatars, the protector of the Sankirtan Bhakti, Vigna Benashana, Nasinga Bhagavan Ki Jai. One of his many appearances in, in Gaur Leela. We, 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 we revere him, we worship him with regards to the, being the protector of Bhakti. Hmm? So, in this way, all opposition to the Sankirtan was overcome. And now, in his dom, mm -hmm. he established in his dom the manifestation on earth, what it should be like. And now everyone was attached to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the reasons of his devotion. Mm -hmm. And now what did he do? He left. How <laughs> you can just try to imagine mm -hmm. how they felt. This is what, what, how the whole the whole all the Vaishnavas, and then he converted the, the, the government. Hmm? All the people now, they were uh, uh, converted basically to Vaishnavism, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, their leader. And the rumor then circulated around town, Nimai Pandit will take sannyas. Nimai Pandit will take sannyas. What will become of his mother, his wife, Vishnu Priya? Hmm? And all of us, what will become of us? He, had, he, he was everything to them. Hmm? And it is said in Bhagavatam, hmm, you think, how could he do that? How could he do that? Right? It's start, you're starting to wonder, well, why could he, how could he do that? Why didn't he stay there? Hmm? What does the Bhagavatam say? Chaktva sudhus tadusurepsataraj lakshmim tarmishtarya vachasa Yadagadaranyam Mayam Rigam Daite Ipsitam Anvadhavad Vande Mahapurushate Charanada Mindam. It's his his renunciation and sannyas is talked about in this way. Chakva Sudhus Chajisura Ipsita Raj Lakshmi. The Raj Lakshmi, the, the royal <coughs> goddess of fortune was Vishnu Priya, his wife. Chakra. He left his wife. I mean, you could get anything from her. Hmm? Right? You remember when Rukmini blessed the Brahmin, Sudama, Krishna's friend, what happened? Huh? Hmm? He left her and her love, really. He left her praying. This is the most pitiful thing. Huh? The devotees' hearts will break to hear this. Hmm? But Chakdvasudusya disrepsi the Raj Lakshman, Dharmishtari Bhachasa Yadagadaranyam, Mayam Rigam. The reason comes. Mayam Rigam Daita Ipsita Man Bharabat. 
Why did he leave? For us. Oh my God, <laughs> now we're really in, we're really in trouble. Hmm? To think, how could he leave? So we were charmed by the possibility of I could have been there with all the devotees chanting with him, how they loved him. Hmm? The stories are innumerable, the measure of their love for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his love for them. It's so charming. Hmm? And he left, and our hearts plummet to the, to the depths. And then we're told he left for us. That we might know about that Leela. That we might enter there. And entering there means to enter into Vrindavan. It's the lotus within the lotus. But Dasya Bhakti to Gore gives you position in Radha Krishna Leela automatically. Sridhar Maharaj used to say, if you come recommended from that department, oh, you're coming from that department. Very good, you come in. <laughs> Very good. You have a place here, an important place. Hmm? Prabhupada used to say, my place of worship is Mayapur, Nabadweep. My place of residence is Vrindavan. Hmm? Worship in Nabadweep, live in Vrindavan. This is a secret. Hmm? Of course, then you end up living in Namadweep also and worshiping in Vrindavan. It goes back and forth. But the point is that the giver of Krishna Leela, of Krishna Bhakti, the fountain from which Krishna Leela is flowing in all directions, hmm, that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he is our Ishta, our deity. We worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and, uh, and, he, and automatically. Then, as I said, you cannot study Krishna Jake Gorlila and not find out about Krishna, not end up loving Krishna, Radha Krishna. Hmm? So he left anyway. Hmm? <coughs> Early in the morning, before the rise of the sun, the rumor had been about and so forth. The night before, he talked with Vishnu Priya and she cried and he said, You don't understand. In this Leela, we have to cry. That is what we have to do. In this Leela, we have to cry for others. Hmm. So f- he went to distribute the Rag Marg hmm, to everyone. He took sannyas. He walked out before the sun was set, and Sachi was that she was she couldn't sleep. She had some hint of this. She stood like a stone figure, and he walked past her. That's sound <laughs> Sachi Nandan Gaurari ki jai. Hmm. Sachinandan, Sachinandan walked past Sachi and walked out. Hmm. This is a heartbreak. How could he do this? How much he cares for us, something like that. And their love only swelled that much more. And he went then to, what is it? Um, uh, place of Mahaprabhu Sanyas. Katwa. Katwa, he went, and there was Keshav Bharati. Now he's meeting his second guru, his sannyas guru. What was the time? 11 04. 04. Mm-hmm. Should I go on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on we go. <laughs> so we said we we're going to talk about his three gurus. Now he come, he's left, he's left Navadweep, or so it appears, <coughs> hmm, he left. Just like it appears that Krishna left Vrindavan to go to Dwarka. For what purpose? To establish Dharma, hmm? deal with the uh, demonic elements and so forth. And Krishna and Vrindavan doesn't do that. Hmm? He doesn't do that. He only gives bhakti. Hmm? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna fully in Navadweep. He comes out to establish Dharma to go to take sannyas, and he'll go to Puri, hmm? as we'll hear, and to South India, where he meets his third guru. Hmm? And Katwa, he met Keshav Bharati, and devotees, head of Bhainitananda Prabhu, came to the sannyas ceremony. Hmm? And uh, it was a pathetic scene. Hmm? Full of Karuna Rasa, hmm? this pathetic Rasa. Of, and um, hmm. 
it's uh, also the compassionate rasa. This corresponds, of course, with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's, this is his compassionate outreach now that he's involved in. Hmm? And they are ex- experiencing karunya rasa. Hmm? And, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has to cut his hair. He's very beautiful in his hair. There are many beautiful songs about his uh, uh, beautiful features and so forth. So to cut the hair, this is... And then, and then the sim, sim, symbol, symbolism of this, you know, that uh, he is the he is the, the, the transcendental Cupid himself, and he's going to shut it, shave his head, which means to do away with all vanity, and you know, you're not supposed to look very pretty like that as a sannyasi. Uh, so uh, he sh- he's going to shave his head to take sannyas. Hmm? Of course, he became more beautiful, but <laughs> but this was this was this was this, this, just how much the devotees were charmed by him. That that this was a huge event. That, that he's going to cut his hair. How can it? How is it possible? Hmm? And of course, what that means, what the implication of that was. So, the barber was cursed. Hmm? <laughs> how could you do that? Huh. Well, who was he in Krishna Leela? He was somebody, I forget. Somebody in Mathura who... <laughs> <laughs> dealt with Krishna in a particular way that was not pleasing to the inhabitants of Vrindavan when Krishna went there. This is the Mathura at Katwa. Hmm? Was it a cloth merchant? Something, a cloth merchant perhaps, yeah. So he cut his hair. Hmm? Keshava Bharati then was to give him the mantra and Mahaprabhu, he said to Marari, I believe it was Marari, said, I think this is the mantra he's going to give me, Tattvamasi. And I'm not particularly fond of that idea, the way it's, it's thought. It means, usually thought of, you are that. It's a, it's a famous aphorism that Shankar, the, of the great Advaitin, uh, uh, made much of. Hmm? He looked at it as the principal bokya or sound of the of the shruti, and uh, it, it, in his interpretation, it talks about the oneness between jiva and brahman. It's not like the oneness between me and Hari Bhakti or me and Agni. <laughs> uh, and so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't like that idea. In dress and formally. Keshava Bharati was in an Advaitin line. You see how he's crossing over the different lines of religious sectarian concerns in the context of his Leela, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He took sannyas from an Advaitin. Of course, Murari was one of his classmates and he was quite learned himself. So he said, I think that you can think of the mantra like this instead of you are that, which is one translation. It can also be translated, you are his. Mahaprabhu said, yeah, that's, that. that's the idea. Hmm? You are his. So then he spoke to Keshava Bharati and he said, the mantra you're going to give me, uh, give me, I'm thinking that this is how it should be thought of. You are his. He breathed that into the ear of Keshava Bharati and a revolution was created in the heart of Keshava Bharati. His whole religious conception was turned upside down. He said, yeah, I like that, he said. <laughs> he became a Vaishnav. <laughs> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu initiated his guru, his sannyas guru, and then he received the mantra from him. Hmm? Uh, he, 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 obviously he doesn't need a guru in either of these two instances now, his Diksha guru, his sannyas guru, as, as we're seeing. But nonetheless, he insisted, no, you give me the mantra and, uh, and so forth, to teach us the importance of having a guru. Hmm? It's amazing that such a thing could be um, thought of as undesirable. <laughs> if you have a guru, then if you think, how could any pos- one possibly think this would be undesirable or an impediment to my spiritual progress? Of course, there is misrepresentation. But as I said, this is hardly a justification because Something can only be misrepresented if it actually exists. That should just say to us that much more. You don't imitate things that aren't good, so. <laughs> there is a good thing, and it's good guidance, 
then it may be imitated, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It does. We should go and seek it out. And what, how will we seek it out? With our sincerity. That's all we have to go with. Hmm? And we'll find our way hmm? in due course and find good guidance. Hmm? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching us this. So he took sannyas from Keshava Bharati after making him into a Vaishnav. Keshava Bharati was one of the nine sannyasis that are said to be the, be the, the uh, metaphorical uh, allegorical root of the tree of bhakti that is Chaitanya himself, the branches of which are his devotees, the fruits of which are love of God. They were, these were very stalwart, the Keshava Bharati, uh, Brahmananda Bharati, Keshav Puri, and so forth. There were nine of them. It means to say that this, his bhakti and this uh, lila, seva that he entered into and opens the doors to for us, has its, with regard to the world, it's rooted in renunciation. Hmm. So it's otherworldly. They're the roots of the tree. Hmm. So how is the tree attached to the world? By renunciation. <laughs> it's that these are the extraordinary roots of an extraordinary tree. Hmm. Uh, and here, and these were elders, I mean, elders and heavy sannyasis, Brahman on the bar, he used to wear only a deer skin. Hmm? They were heavy renunciates. Their, their renunciation was, uh, detachment was very prominent and visible. Hmm? And elders, they would, you know, it was frightening practically to a household to see such a person like, oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> run in the other direction, you know. <laughs> and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu now is only 25 years old. Hmm. Some of us have been there. Huh? Uh, you'll get there soon. <laughs> 25 years old, and, uh, and, and, you know, in the prime of his life, and as I said, the whole of Nadia was attracted to him. There were every, the world was falling at his feet to offer itself to him, as it does to youth, especially a youth like this. And she's going to forego it all from a, just a religious, worldly point of view. It's just like shocking. It's like you find people that, uh, who say, you know, that they're religious. And um, like Sri Ramarsha's parents, Brahminical family, very religious and so forth. But when he wanted to join Gaudiya Mahat, they said, well, you know, let's not take it too far. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's a good thing. <laughs> but, but, but that's a little extreme, uh, something like that. So here he had taken sannyas, and this is earth shattering. I mean, earth shattering. Generally, the sannyas take, of course, I took sannyas at 25 or 24, but that was also crazy. But that was Prabhupada. <laughs> he drove us crazy, so. <laughs> but uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he. Uh, this was earth shattering, uh, you know, like an earthquake rippling across uh, West Bengal and Katois, and Puri's not far by comparison, and the subcontinent of India. So the news was rippling down that this, this, this such a thing happened, and and so what happened then? Well, at Nityanandapur, he went back to Nadia, and he brought. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mother. Mm-hmm. Now, when you take sannyas, you know, it's not like, you know, uh, it's, you're giving up the whole family and everything like that. So, it's not really great to have your mother around for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, then he's just taking sannyas and here's his mother. And so, what does he say? He says, oh, I'm crazy. What have I done? Condem- I've con- condemned for what I've done to give you up in this way, you know. I'm prepared to give up the sannyas. I did it in a moment of madness. All of his, his love for Sachi. This is this Rasananda coming out. Nityananda Prabhu is bring, he's in charge of this. Batsale Rasa, Saki Rasa, Dasi Rasa in Braj. This is his domain. Hmm? He orchestrated this wonderful Batsalya in Gorlila hmm? at the taking of the sannyas. And Mahaprabhu says, Screw the sannyas. This is, 
wait a minute, you just took some, yeah, this is a, you know, this is a big thing. <laughs> Forget it. Uh, it's mom, you know. Here I, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 so, of course, she's a religious person, and so she thinks, I, I cannot have my son be criticized by learned people for giving up sannyas, but I cannot bear to lose him at the same time. Hmm? And he put it in her hands. You, I, you do with me as you like. Mom, mother knows best. So. Whatever you say that, well, I, I will do. He was going to go to Vrindavan hmm? and uh, from Navadweep. So Sachi with her wisdom said, no, you keep the sannyas. What's done is done. Hmm? And go to Jagannath Puri. That's not far. So news about you will come. I'll hear news about you. So this way it was kind of rectified, so to speak. He walked out in the middle of the night. and She was like a stone statue. She couldn't speak and he couldn't talk to her. And so Nityananda Prabhu said, we've got to straighten this out. We've got to work this. We're a family here. You've know? <laughs> you got to work this out. So this is how it was worked out. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then, onward he went to Jagannath Puri as a sannyasi. And this is his leela in which he comes after us, so to speak. So he arrives in Puri, of course, and there the first thing he does is convert the Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, this big logician who was very well educated and now he was living in Puri. He was one of the king's gurus, um, advisors and so forth. And so he convert the king's guru, he convert the king. Hmm? Um, but on the strength of his own charm and so forth, the Rajpratapurudra was very powerful, became the follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sarvabhoma was completely converted. It's a huge conversion. Um, and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I'm a sannyasi, so I've got to go. And as they travel, not to stay in any one place for too long is kind of the idea where you might become attached and dependent on someone for your sustenance, not a practice. I'm not dependent, I'll go and God will take care of me, something like that. So he was wanted to go to South India. This is part of the Madhya Leela, the, in, the intermediate the middle Leela of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his outreach, it's all for us, his sannyas, hmm? so that we could go back into the Navadweep and forget about the sannyas of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We're not interested in that. Hmm? But we are interested in that, aren't we? Because he's there he's teaching, that makes it possible for us to understand him. And the full measure of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is his Leela Nadia hmm, in Navadweep. That's where we want to enter. That is the lotus inside the lotus where you'll find yourself hmm, in Krishna Leela at the same time. Hmm? So, as he was leaving Jagannath Puri, having just converted the whole place, hmm, uh, Sarvabhoma said to him, you know, one thing I have to tell you, if you're going to go, if you, if you got to go, you got to go, but uh, you do what you can do as you like. You are the Ishwar, Indo- Swatantra, completely in, independent and so forth. But I got one small piece of advice for you. There's a person you got to meet down there. I never really understood this guy before. Huh? Theraboma, again, was a logician, a Vedantist, and so forth. And he said... This, I met this fellow before. There's something about him that I thought was interesting, but I couldn't quite relate to him. But now that I have understood you, now I understand him. And you two got something in common. Hmm? You've got to meet this person. He's working for the government down there. His name is Ramananda. Roy Ramananda. Hmm? He would speak in some ways, poetically and whatnot. I couldn't quite get it, but now I, I get it. Now that I know you. You are two birds of the same feather. Hmm? You, you got to meet him. Hmm? So Mahaprabhu said, I take it on my head. This is like a fourth guru. You're my siksha guru. Yeah, so I take your siksha and I look for him. And he came in the course of his travels early on in South India, the banks of the Godavari, and there bathing in the morning in the river, this sannyasi, hmm? 
Uh, Shri Krishna Chaitanya was his sannyas name. Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Say it. Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Hmm? Krishna Chaitanya, it means Krishna consciousness. Hmm? That was <laughs> a very nice name. Uh, he, he was bathing and along came horns and reciters and the uh, kind of uh, kind of a governor of the area on a palanquin being taken, which was a you know like getting him in a car and his limo and driving him to the to the spa or something. He was going to <laughs> <laughs> to bathe at the at the river, and so uh, quite a few uh, Brahmins and whatnot and uh, and. Uh, servants of the court, so to speak. And, um, and this was Ramananda. And they saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they stopped in their paths. And they were on very different paths, ostensibly, as so it appeared. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sannyasi. Ramananda was in the government, politics, and uh, Ramananda was a householder. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were enunciate, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a sannyasi, and, a, and, a, and the Brahmin was supposed to, according to the social system, keep certain company and avoid other company uh, in terms of intimate dealings and so forth. And Ramananda was from a Shudravarna, and so uh, there were reasons from a social point of view that they shouldn't have connected but they they connected deeply very deeply just from looking at one another they connected and Ramananda tears began to come from his eyes and his associates were seeing something about him they didn't know what was his inner life and and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tears falling from his eyes and they went to one another and in front of everybody they embraced, and people were thinking, what, what's going on here? This is extraordinary, what, what, what is this? This isn't like, this is like the crossing over the socio-religious standards, and it's wrong, but it looks right. <laughs> they look like they belong to one another. They, 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 they have something deep in common, and Mahaprabhu exchanged words with him, and, and glorified Ramana, and the Ramana said, you're a sannyasi, I, I, I'm a, a low-born person, you're an elevated soul, you know, and so forth. Mahaprabhu said, we, I want to meet, uh, you know Krishna, I want to learn from him about you. Hmm? He said, kiba vipra, kiba nashi, sudra kene noi, ye krishna tattva veta se guru hai. Hmm? Where will we find our guru? Anywhere. Anywhere, wherever we find uh, someone who, who knows the tattva of Krishna, hmm, then we find our guru there. We might think, you know, he has to be in this group, he has to be in this institution, or he has to come from this type of family, or uh, he, he, sure, he can't be an American, or he, you know, he has to be an Indian, or and people have all kinds of thoughts about it. Mahaprabhu didn't think like that. He said, he said, all this social system, he said, I just had nothing to do with that. Hmm? I'm interested in something beyond that, socio-religious life. I'm interested in spiritual life. Ye Krishna Tattva Se Guru Hoy. Whoever knows Krishna, that's my guru. This is the third guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? And Ramana said, you're God. He said, well, you're my guru. <laughs> He said, so I want to learn from you. So then a beautiful Leela and Susan, full of tattva there, and recorded it. We are now in Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Sambad, the conversation between Chaitanya and Ramananda. And Chaitanya would be asked the questions, and Ramananda gives the answers. And, we, and he asks about what is the goal of life and how to attain it. This is a very nice question. We should ask the guru, prospective guru. Hmm? If we're brought to a guru, we want to know what he's teaching. So we say, what is your sadhya and what is your sadhana? Hmm? He says, my sadhya is prem, prem prayojan. 
my sadhana is bhakti, my sadhya is bhakti, my sadhana is bhakti, my goal is bhakti, my means is, my way is bhakti. We say, okay, this is what we're looking for. We're <laughs> theoretic, at least I got that clear now. He goes, how much you attain, how well you can teach it, if you can charm my heart, you know, then I'm, I'm all for that. I want that. Hmm. So he, Ms. Mahaprabhu asked him this question, what is your sadhya? What is the sadhana? He said, what is the best sadhya? What is the best sadhana? Hmm? He's already initiated uh, diksha. He's already taken sannyas. Hmm? Uh, so uh, what is he going to learn now? Hmm? In other words, he's taken diksha. Then if you take sannyas, it's like you, 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 you graduated from diksha. You shouldn't take sannyas without inner experience, inner life is the idea. This is not supposed to be part of sadhana bhakti. Hmm? It's sannyasi is, is sarvadhanman pritaja mami kam sadhanam raja. This is beyond the dharma. So in the context of bhakti, it's beyond sadhana. Hmm? Not that he doesn't do sadhana, at least for example, or that, but there's another kind of sadhana in bhava bhakti. Hmm? Hmm. It has elements of sadhana and elements of prema. Hmm? So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas. Now he comes to Ramana. And he's, he's teaching us there's there's more than this sannyas, which essentially means to give up. There's something to get. Hmm? And so here he finds his ragmarguru. What is the time? Eleven twenty-seven. Eleven twenty-seven. He finds his ragmarguru, the the path of rag, the path. Here, we, the inner life of Chaitanya was coming out that much for, more, much more, even then in the even in the context. I go Even in the context of distributing it, you see, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is doing the Yuga Dharma, distributing Nam and Kirtan, but he is who he is, so it's going to come out in a particular way. Hmm? That means Ragmarg it becomes accessible through him, through his dispensation of Nam. In other yugas, you might chant Nam, but you would not necessarily get entrance to Ragmarg. But this is the blessing of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? He's Krishna himself. What else is, what else is he going to give? Hmm? He's going to give himself then. So here he's, 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 he's renounced the world entirely, but he wants to enter into that other world. Hmm? Of course, obviously, he was already in the other world, but in the terms of a lesson to us. Hmm? He's going to be schooled now in the whole of the Bhagavatam, in this conversation of Ramananda, because Bhagavatam is really a, as we know from Brihad Bhagavatamrita, for example, which is ostensibly a commentary on Bhagavatam. It's about the fact that the world is permeated by consciousness, the subjective side of life, is, this is the most important thing, and there are gradations of consciousness everywhere, lokas, hmm? and ultimately it is the goloka, hmm? the cow loka, the cow place. Hmm? The cows are the givers, so, uh, to go to that place, to that realm, to that uh, consciousness reality. Hmm? the consciousness of consciousness. So he takes him through the whole, all religious possibilities, starting with the social religious life of Barnashan that they just crossed over in their meeting and violated and trampled on. Mm -hmm. Hmm? <laughs> and Mahaprabhu says, say more. Hmm? He goes from there uh, up the religious ladder and in, into, into, he, he, Mahaprabhu is rejecting everything. He says, that's not good. That doesn't, in, that doesn't interest me. That doesn't interest me. So he's testing him out, so to speak, and, and Ramanan is answering progressively, progressively. He doesn't tell everything to everybody. He's finding Ramanan as a, in the role of the guru here. I've got a very good student. Huh. I'm testing. Well, what, what do you think about this? No, nah, it's not good enough. Okay, more. He comes to the point of shuddha bhakti, gyan shunya bhakti, bhakti unencumbered by knowledge, even the knowledge that Krishna is God. Mahaprabhu said, we're getting somewhere. This is, I find, interesting. Gyane praya shuddha pasyamante eva. This uh, putting gyan in its place, in a box, locking it up, 
mm. bhakti for its own sake. Mm. Mahaprabhu said, I like that, go on. Then he talked about dasya bhakti, sakya bhakti, vatsalya bhakti, madhurya bhakti, mm. romantic bhakti. Mahaprabhu said, yes, this, yeah, we really, well, this is, this is getting, each, each one, he said, this is the best. Mm. Dasya bhakti, this is the best. Is there anything more? Sakya bhakti, this is the best. <laughs> and then Vatsali bhakti, this is the best. And they are all the best. That's a fact. Mm. For each devotee, mm, they are the best. But objectively speaking, he's going up the ladder. Mm. Madhurya bhakti. And then in the context of Madhurya bhakti, he says, say something about Krishna then. He speaks about Krishna tattva. Then, they say something about Radha. He speaks about Radha Tattva. Hmm? And then he's spoken about them, separ- about them separately. Krishna Tattva, Radha Tattva. Is there anything more? Hmm? Ramanam says, there's more, but I can't say it. <laughs> Nobody asked me about this. I tried to tell the Sarvabhoma, but he couldn't figure me out. Hmm? He sent you to me, I say. <laughs> He said, I can say something, but everything I've said so far, I have cited the sacred text to support it. But this one is off the map. (laughs) Hmm? This is like beyond, this hasn't been written about. Hmm? Really. Uh, It's it's where it it goes, ultimately. Um, Mahaprabhu said, let, let, go ahead, let's hear it. So Ramananda spoke. He spoke Radha Krishna Pranay. This is what, actually what he spoke. This is a verse of Surab Damodar. He didn't say this verse, but Krishna uses this verse earlier on in the Chaitanya Charge. Radha Krishna Pranay, Vikriti Radini Shakti Ras. What is Pranay? Well, maybe we discussed it tonight, but Radha Krishna Pranay. And uh, I quoted it earlier. He talked about the union of Radha and Krishna. He talked about them separately, and he talked about the union, where their, their distinctions, their self-identity is blurred. Hmm? Their self-identity is, in t- this is Pranay, completely blurred in a dynamic sense, as this kind of a unity. Prema hmm? bilas bivarta. It's called also. Hmm? When he's speaking about it and he finishes, what happened? He looks at his student, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he sees Radha and Krishna. <laughs> how, could, how good of a student he was. <laughs> he learned it, what is Bernai? I think, is this what you mean? And then he looked again, and it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and again it was Radha Krishna, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm? Hmm. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahayanya, Rupanuga, Janera, Jivan. The followers of Rupa Goswami, this is their life. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna, Radha Krishna Milan. Hmm? This is, we find in Ramananda Sampad, this is, uh, Mahaprabhu is learning from Ramananda, who is Vishaka Gopi, uh, Radharani's dear friend in Vrindavan. Hmm? What is the Radha Bhav, what it comes to, and so forth. He, so he shows himself, as I say, to, and Ramananda faints, faints. Hmm? So this is his Ragmar Guru. There we can learn something about Ragmar. This is the one of the crescendos of the whole it, it can be said to be the crescendo of the whole Chaitanya Charitamrita, hmm? this conversation. In this way, we talked about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's three gurus. There's a place for that, be a little open for teaching. It may come from different places. Hmm? If we know the teaching well, then, then we know our teacher well. Then we know he or she is not limited. Hmm? As we said earlier, discussing yesterday, Chet Krishna's Kaviraj has gone to great efforts to emphasize what? Guru is, to, is many and one at the same time. And one means Guru is Krishna. Hmm? 
Same message, hmm? same teaching, appearing in different uh, vessels at different times. Hmm? It's said in Bhagavatam, one cannot learn the truth from one guru alone. So you better get out there and look around <laughs> for somebody else. <laughs> but of course it means that you have to look so carefully at your guru hmm, and pay such close attention that when you turn the other way you find the whole world is speaking the same message. Hmm. Uh, because what he's teaching is, or she's teaching is not something in a book. It may be represented in the book to some extent, but hmm. this is what the whole world is saying hmm, to us. Hmm. So, some the idea is openness to learn, openness to, uh, to, be, to, 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 to uh, sign on for being a student forever. Hmm. We're finding even Krishna becomes a student in the to the to the to the dancing of of Radha, Krishna. Krishna, he says, "What Radhika Premera, Ami Guru, Ami Shishu Guru Nata, Radhika Premera Unmata." I'm the Shish, I'm the disciple, and Radha's dancing is my guru. Hmm? Her love drives me mad. <laughs> 